first game and uh, Let's see what get it underway. Play. You guys have waited long enough. I've waited long enough. I want to know how wrong I am on these players' predictions. Priest and Shaman. Wow, that's actually got to be one of the worst starts for RDU because I have played this match. I've played both sides of this enough, and Shaman is not uh, in the best position to win this match. Uh, Kalento mulligan. He keeps a Cabal Shadow Priest and picks up the second one, though. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of mana worth of cards in his hand. Damn yeah, this is pretty awkward because it's like I agree that sh uh, the shaman is disadvantaged here, but if you are able to be super aggressive and just kill your opponent before they play the Cabal Shadow Priest, you put yourself in a really good position. Here he decides to play a Nerubian Egg, uh, which is kind of like slowish, but on the other hand, it's um, it's protecting him from removal cards. Yep. Like AoE. Wow. Colento's hand is just... He, he needs Circle of Healing. It's like, if he gets Circle of Healing, he puts himself in a, in a good position, I guess. But right now, it's just... Uh, it's just bad. Like, yeah, on turn really four, is. do you play Okanai Soul Priest? I don't know. This is rough. He really wants the Defender of Argus here, though. Look at this. And he's going to do it. Four damage. He's got a... That's a pretty scary board. I'm not going to lie. Is oh he, my ooh. god, that's Circle of Healing! <laughs> this gives your opponent a 4-4 if you use this too, so that is something he wants but to still, think you, about. You clear the Undertaker and you yeah. clear the 2-3, it's a, a very nice thing to do. Yeah, that's the important part. That Circle of Healing, by the way, if that wasn't drawn, this game would have snowballed out of control we'll be just really over. quickly. Yeah, this game would have just... This would have been done <laughs> about as quickly as you can possibly imagine. But now Kalento putting himself in a position where he's able to recover. This is why he kept Cabal Shadow Priest, by the way. If he's able to get to this point, the Cabal Shadow Priest single-handedly turns the game around. You're going to see RDU invest a lot of his resources to try to fight through this sort of uh, board position. And there's going to be pressure on Kalento, but again, I just I feel like oh my God. Cabal Shadow the Priest is going to do too much. That's what Shadow that's what Word like. Madness. And he even picks up a Holy Nova. Well, but yeah, if you use Shadow Madness, like... Now you have to decide what do you want to do. It's like because the shadow Ma shadow word madness is just uh, you kill the spiders and you get the small spiders. Oh um, yeah, uh, this is this is an easy play for me. You just you take out his six one and you take out his three one. You're putting stuff with a couple points of damage, but you're going to be sitting at twenty four. You have a couple spiders on the board and look at your hand. At this point, uh, it, it, the game took a drastic turn. It went from having no way to clear the board and nothing left to do to destroying your, entire, your opponent's entire side of the board and swinging the tempo in your favor. Yeah, right now it looks pretty good for Kalento. Um, it seemed bad because he didn't have the cards, but right now he enters the, the power turns and uh, he will be able to play those six mana Cabo Shadow Priest follow up with um, AoE clear or just... Um, yeah, he's just getting to tell them. Yep. Can't blame him. Mind control. Yeah, Mind Control is a really interesting card that I see a lot of priests start to include, uh, again, in their decks. And I think sort of the idea behind it is you just want to, you know, kind of one for one them throughout the entire game. And then on turn 10, there's your swing turn. And it's almost always a guaranteed swing turn because it just takes your opponent's guy. It destroys your opponent's minion and gives you one. It's sometimes it feels like Deathwing sometimes, except you don't have to discard your hand. Yeah, the uh, card is just a good, and right now the meta game is kind of slower, so you are getting to the to that turn ten, like, right. and you also have the clears. So as as we could see here, um, the Okanai Soul Priest plus Circle of Healing combo, and Holy Nova, like he will easily get to turn ten here, and he will be able to steal something um, meaningful. Yep, Shadow of Death with Wild Power Man, so that's going to clear out all these one health minions, and it's going to threaten this. Defender of Argus token left by itself. This is sort of an example, by the way, of how bad this matchup actually is. Think about what RDU's start was. And Kalento, yeah, he got a little bit lucky. He drew the right card to make sure that he could stabilize the, the board position. But think about, again, just how strong the star was versus Kalento, who's played, I don't know, like, just really, he hasn't really played that many cards, but he has just so much control over this game. How does he even lose it at this point? This is over. It's like yeah. RDU is out of gas. Like, he has nothing. And Colento is still high on health, and um, he's just in such a good position with all the cards, like the swing cards, even like Holy, Holy Fire. Like even if there is like Fire Elemental, it can just go down easily. Yep. Sorry to the RDU fans out there, but uh, this is a matter of just going through the motions at this point. And just play whatever. Yep. <laughs> it's like no cards, no board. Priest fits so well, I think, into Colento's play style. 
I want to add to because he wants to again he wants to just restrict his opponent's options and keep them he wants to make the game as hard for his opponent to win as possible and via that route of winning the game win the game himself versus Kalento I think it's going to be Rogue or Warlock but uh, there's only one way to find out Kalento of course has to stay with Priest there's Rogue I think that's already use I think already used Rogue play by the way <clears throat> really spot on uh, a lot of people play this deck respond like in a sort of like a uh, intending to respond sort of way, but he, we actually seen him in a couple tournaments, he ran things like Shade of Naxxramas, just to try to take board position and start fighting that way. He was and also running right. Perdition's Blade, by the way, um, I am Shenzhen, it's like, it seems like RDU was running Miracle Rogue from the very beginning, like he was playing so many matches with the, with the deck, and uh, he had a lot of success as well, so he knows way, his matchups, he knows how to run it, uh, how to run it and how to get the advantage with, with the deck. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. This is sort of an interesting one. Looks like it's going to be Edwin Van Cleef's a 4-4. Who that priest has no way to deal with 4-4 minions. Everybody knows that. Man. Unless there is a circle <laughs> of healing coming again. Ooh. Wow, look at that. He picks up a blood mage. Chooses to just attack it anyway. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Just huh. play blood mage and backstab? I think uh, it, that seems like a fine play to me. But he's got bigger pictures in mind. Now look what does he do? Is this well, the thing about blood mage right is like, if you use blood mage early, it's uh, then you 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 might just um, exactly <laughs> like there are better cards to deal with when you have a black mage. It, 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 blood mage. If you just use it here, uh, like if you use it before, it's just a play where you lose the card and you are not able to to get that plus one damage, which is really important. Sure. Let me ask you this though: How? Oh my gosh, you still sap and conceal. That's no good. I was Matt thinking feels. about Okanai Circle here, but maybe it's not the moment. Like maybe yeah. he's just keeping it for Gadgets and Auctioneer. I think I think you have to keep it for Gadgets and because if you don't manage to have an answer to that, you're just gonna you're gonna fall really short. Chooses to sap the Van Cleef here though. Um, An added value is by the way that uh, you used one Okanai Soul Priest, so you're giving a clear signal to your opponent that hey, I just used it, and there is a chance that I don't have a second one. So your opponent might feel safe to just play Gadget Sand and conceal it, if possible? Yeah, there's definitely that possibility. Picks up Shadow Step, but that's not going to be any immediate use. I really, actually, looking back, I really like the sap on the Van Cleef there, because not only is it preventing four points of damage the next turn, but his opponent's also got to reinvest into the Van Cleef. And he doesn't want to make it too big. And look at Shadow, and Cabal Shadow Priest has now taken this Blood Mage, so Kalento's actually going to get the card from it. Again, some really strong responses here, fighting for this board position. But uh, Kalento's hand is looking pretty good for this for this circumstance, I'd say. Yeah, and still there is no gadget Chan from RDU. It's yeah. some hiding somewhere in the deck, being shy. You what do you think about strong. gadget Chan in this matchup? Um, I think it's paramount. Yeah, I think that that Rogue can obviously win without it, but. If they manage to draw it, the game can very easily spiral out of control. Especially in this already... matchup where the Priest can actually heal. So Look. if you're going the damage ra a route, it's um, you might not have enough. Yeah, chooses to go for a 4-4 again. Making sure, very deliberate to play around uh, Shadow Word Death. I think it's pretty important. Smite is drawn for Kalento. This, this, if he's running Smite, does that mean he's not running Zombie Child? This is something I've noticed a lot in some of these lists is uh, some people run Smite and some people run Zombie Chow and when I see Smite I typically don't see Zombie Chow and I think that makes a lot of sense because he's also got Wild Pyromancer in this list. Is that is that what's happening? Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. It's the, it's kind of like a list that's more anti-aggro. So you're running Smite, you're running those those mid-game cards, you might even run uh, Shade of Naxxramas in the list but you're not running Undertakers and like the Frattles and Zombie Chow. Okay. And Holy Smite is just a perfect answer to, to turn on Undertaker. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of this play? What do you think of Wild Pyromancer smiting the Van Cleef? And conceal? And then, <laughs> and then, and then healing your Wild Pyromancer and concealing. Yeah, I, I guess it's a, a solid play. And it's concealed, so you can just uh, trade with something this turn, even. Oh, okay, he's going for a. Why did he play the... There it is. 
Why, wait, why did he play Injured Blade Master before the second activation? Did he really just want to conceal it that badly? Yeah, I guess. Okay, that you makes can sense. you can easily kill it if um, by attacking into it or whatever. So yeah. he just so wanted he to just, keep the. Wow, he just wanted to use it as a removal spell. This is this is the sort but of. But then stuff again, that, that's weird, right? Because he yeah. could actually heal the the pyromancer. Yeah, well, that this is the way that Kalento plays, though, is he just again tries to make it as hard as possible for his opponent to actually win the game. He, it's it's just a very different play style. Every time I see it, it's like. I remember to look for situations like this, and so that way I can try to add them into my repertoire as I continue to play the game as well. But this is one of those positions where um, now Kalento is extremely happy that he's held on to this Akanai Soul Priest for a long time, but Gadget Sand getting a lot of damage done here. Already well, digging so far into his deck, but he's not getting the right combinations of cards right now. He this didn't is, get he, the spells at all. It's like yeah. he, he got the preparations uh, hoping that he can actually draw something, but he didn't get anything there. Do you kill your own Sylvanas now with Shadow War Death? It's also an option. Just attack for five and I kill think, the Gatchison. I think it's it's pretty easy to do that, I think. Yeah, actually, I, think I wasn't even play. paying attention to the Shadow War Death in his hand. For some reason, it just didn't register to me. And then you have a Hawkeye Circle for the next <laughs> potential Where option you here. Kill yourself. Okay. He's going to keep Shadow War Silences in this deck, too. Wait Kal I think Kalinto just realized the misplay. He could have drawn an extra card off the power word shield. You actually saw his facial reaction to that. He realized immediately. I don't. I think he may not have seen that he could do this right away. Yeah, he realized that. Well, it's the thing that you are so focused on uh, using Circle of Healing that you just don't realize you have another right. play. And he was he just keeping those two cards from the beginning of the game almost. Yep. Or you're gonna have to push for a little bit of damage, but I don't know. I'm not. I'm not convinced that he has it anymore. That Gadget Auctioneer did not get the work it needed to get. You know, needs to get done. Done. <laughs> um, silence on the Azure Jack. He just wants to pick up a card right now. <laughs> now he can mind control the four four after silencing it. <laughs> <laughs> Solid play. <laughs> well. Gosh, it's this just is a play, turn. kind of. Like, yeah. what, what are the better targets for mind control? It's like Edwin is gosh. out of the way. I don't know. The 4-4 four, four, Sludge Belcher is a possible mind control target. I don't, I'm not really thinking better card. I'm thinking, is there a better turn to do it? Oh, he's actually clearing here. Wow, I'm a little bit surprised by that. Well, he developed the board, and he cleared the board on the other hand. So he was... Even able to heal himself a bit, because you know if you if you're staring at like five cards, it's a lot of uh, it can be a lot of um, a lot of damage coming from your opponents. Like Leroy double shadow step, maybe double sinister strike, and you're dead. Like basically being at twenty is um, is dangerous. Like Leroy double shadow step, like shiv and attack from the weapon, you're dead. <gasps> Oh my gosh, 18. Wait. He's got 22 <laughs> damage. Oh my gosh, I've only backed that about it. It's... He's 2 damage of lethal now. Wow. So just killing yourself as a priest was a pretty good way yep. to get out of Oh my gosh. And he just needs to heal himself as much as he can. I don't think he's expecting this much damage either. Ah, maybe I'm wrong though. Look at this. He's making yeah, he sure that to. he stays healed. 24 life is the magic number for Kalento right now. Even if you saw something like Eviscerate, it wouldn't be enough damage. Cold Blood wouldn't be enough damage. You'd be one damage short in all those scenarios. Well, and the thing is, like, Kalento was like, uh -huh. originally a Miracle Rogue player as well. Like, yeah. he was playing it um, for a long time. And right now, he just. He can count, like he knows what's happening, and the rogue is not playing any cards there. Ooh, Gotcha that's a painful draw. Card. It's a painful draw, and he can't afford these shadow steps on this auctioneer. He's got to try to get damage through somehow. Second Holy Nova. I think Kalento is just going to be too far out of reach. Yeah. Making sure that he stayed at, at this 24 or higher life total going into his opponent's turn. Yeah, that's going to do it. He gives seats. it up. Wow. So even a slight misstep 
from Colento. Not enough. Very well played, by the way, too. He made sure he's playing right now. I would suspect it's a handlock deck, but there's a chance it's a zoo lock. Game three, RDU versus Colento. He needs this win, too, by the way. Falling down three games to zero in a best of five. You know, you're not out of it yet, but it's got to feel it's got to feel poor, especially when one of the matchups you lost was favorable. And it's a handlock, and he gets a Twilight Drake in his starting hand, which is pretty good. The mull against yeah. the rest. Is there going to be a giant or a second multi um, Twilight Drake? Not really. You can already see, by the way, that he's kind of frustrated. You saw how quickly he mulliganed. And he just looks focused. I, RDU, I know he hates losing, especially if he feels like he made a mistake. And it is... Oh, what the... Okay. What, what what was he thinking about? Was he There's that no was way he was thinking about moral coiling, right? That's impossible. <laughs> There's okay. no way he's actually have, thinking about I moral don't know coiling, what he right? was thinking. This is this was weird. Okay, so basically um for priest how priest is playing this matchup is uh you can go okay or can you go aggro? Right away. Just um, um you can, but uh, this is I think this is the position he wants to be in, where he is just going to be finding himself drawing cards, and hopefully he can put together enough uh, enough resources to fend off these super efficient plays that his opponent's going to be making. Again, this is a 4-8 Twilight Drake. There's no easy answer to this from the Priest's perspective. He's going to actually have to deal minion damage to this if he wants to kill it. So well, because of that, drawing cards, of, of course, is major importance in this match. So leading with Northshire Cleric into Power Word Shield and start drawing cards immediately, because... The Pyromancer is able to damage both of your guys. That's super important. Well, the thing is, like, uh, right now he's going uh, with the board, like, just building the board and dealing as much damage as possible. So he's trying to force the handlock into defense instead of just, you know, using his advantage. Oh my god, he picks another oh Twilight my Drake. Oh gosh, second Twilight Drake's a pretty huge draw. This is, uh, this is going to turn into real bad news for Kalento if this does not steal an Iron Begow, I think. Yes. He has to go with the Fault Steel, and there is no yeah. Iron Beagle. But there is Ragnaros. Senor El Fuego certainly may have a couple things to say about this game, but as it stands, I, you know, he's got a. Oh, silence. wow, he's got a. I forgot about the copy of Silence in his yeah, deck. There is Silence in the deck. And Silence is actually killing one of the Drakes because of the Pyromancer. Oh, it's killing effectively two of the Drakes because now he can run the other Pyromancer. And then Drake, Kalentos <laughs> managed to deal you. with two Twilight Drakes. Look at RDU's face. He was like, oh my god, I just don't believe it. Silence, which is one of the worst cards in the game. It's like just not doing anything here. Just easily clearing the board. My gosh. That was a sick play. He's facing down a mountain giant now, though. He's got to get past this. Well, he still has a Sludge Belcher. He doesn't yeah. have Shadow War Death, but... Uh, look, at, uh, look at RDU. He's like 18 points of health. I think he's I think he's comfortable in that life journal though. I don't think he's really worried about it. You know, he's got Siphon Soul in his hand. He's got two copies of Sludge Belcher in his hand. Not much he's worried about. Shadow Madness, by the way, really good against Sludge Belcher when your opponent's got an eight eight on the board. And there is a Sludge Belcher coming. Yeah. Oh my God. Eight to the dome. I think like Sludge Belcher is one of the best targets you can take with Shadow War Madness. Wow. It's like I love to take Sludge Belcher. Oh my gosh! How do you play this turn? Um, what is going on? Do you just start with stealing such Belcher? Because it's just it's just too good. Yeah, I mean it feels like that's <laughs> really not many other plays. But here's the question is do you Well, I was gonna ask, do you play anything else? And do you push everything for face? Is there any merit to sacrificing your Dark Cultist here? Leroy in the hand. He's getting really close to the amount of damage he needs. It's funny how Colento can actually go for face because he got Ragnaros as well. But this board is pretty tough. It's like playing versus handlock. You you often have to make um, an assumption that there is no molten giant. Like you have to risk it sometimes if there is no other game plan. And uh, here, Colento, uh, matchup wise, he's really disadvantaged with priest versus handlock. Yeah, going into it, I certainly agree. I think the the matchup is a pretty large favorite for handlock. But again, this is the Ragnar's turn. The copy of Silence was literally the difference between winning and losing this game. I think. Yeah, at that point, that was he has, a, yeah, he has a pretty good chance to win right now, and without it, I don't know if he would have gotten anything done. 
Where do you they go just, from here, though? Do just slam Ragnaros. Just kill the free free with the free four. Attack for one. Slam Ragnaros. Right or you can actually. You could also just kill the giant. Yeah, yeah, that's also fine. Oh my god! Wow, he death. picks up Shadow Seriously. of Death. The top and decks are real. Yeah, this is a pretty big swing for Clento's got a smile on his face. You know, it's, you don't see emotion from him very often, but when you do, it's because something's good happening. Senor Del Fuego comes out. If it hits the cleric, by the way, oh my god, this cleric from turn one just tanked eight points Madness. of damage. This and now, does Kalento just jam his own Ragnaros now? What do you do? Is this a Sylvanas or a Ragnaros turn? What do you think? I think you can... Well, you can go with Ragnaros because you have mind control. So if you hit, you're great in a great position. If you don't, your opponent just goes down to six. Yep. And you can exactly steal the Ragnaros next turn. Oh, oh my gosh. Golden Senor El Fuego takes out the imposter one. <laughs> Non-Golden Ragnaros, get out of here. And well, R2. it's going Siphon Sold. Yeah, it's getting Siphon Sold, but my goodness, he's not in a good spot right now. He's lost two of his Giants. He's lost two of his Drakes. His Ragnaros is gone. kalento has got ten cards in his hand and is at a very comfortable life total. The Priest is pressuring the Handlog at this point. Yeah, this is just a sick situation. I mean, Ardu can can clear this. He has Shadow Flame. He has Iron Beak. But, man, it's just a bad position. It's just you're losing cards. And even using Power Overwhelming here, it's just... Uh, Losing part of the combo. It's you have this power overwhelming Leroy faceless combo. Yep. And now you're but missing. But you know, Colento has twenty six points no. of health. That's a lot. I don't know if he's gonna be able to get through this, man. Well, you can't life up from now, I guess, because you're getting really low, and there is no point in getting low. I have no time for games. Oh wow, man, it's Sylvanas. Colento has chosen to develop his board, and this is gonna be a push for lethal here pretty soon. And Iron Beak all drawn. There is a giant, uh, but yeah, this looks like it's gonna be another Shadow Flame turn. Yeah, you have to Shadow Flame sure. here. Sure, but you're dropping so low. It's like 11 points of health. Yep. Slash Vulture is pretty nice. I think Halento feels fine though. He's seen Power Overwhelming go away, and he's seen Leroy go away now, so he knows that there's no 20 point damage burst in his opponent's deck anymore. Um, this giant is already being challenged. <laughs> this the is way. the mind control giant. Oh my gosh, oh he my just cut the coil. <laughs> to you. Unluckiest are you ever. Oh, and I don't really know nice. if that's... You know what? When it, when you think about it, is he supposed to use the mortal coil first to forego the card draw to avoid that scenario? This is something that I don't think is talked about very often when people use Soulfire before they use mortal coil because there is a chance that this is going to happen. Is there merit to using mortal coil prior to using... Uh, so far there to make sure that you forego Sometimes there is. that opportunity to happen. And of course, my control here. This game, by the way, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this game is just it's, over. Over, it's over pretty much when the Soul Fire misses and uh, hits his Mortal Coil. That's basically the end of the game. Uh, it, there's just no way he can climb back from it at this point. So this game is going to be three over to Kalento now. He has fought through two massive disadvantages, uh, at least in my opinion, to take a 3-0 lead in this one. And my gosh, silence, the card silence, the priest spell, zero cost mana, silence, a minion, three zero leads. It feels best to be down three games to zero. Well, you know, I'm pretty biased because uh, I'm Colentus <laughs> mate, but I, I, I didn't expect this, like really. A 3-0 with a priest. And he did um, take the priest. So we are uh, having a coin flippy matchup here. Are both players having decent hands, I, I'd say? Yeah. Well, Artyu is really missing the coin in here. Talk to me a little bit about this matchup because I, I've played a lot of different kinds of priest decks, but actually one of the ones I don't have a lot of experience in is uh, the actual priest mirror match. What are some key cards in this matchup, and what is each player looking to accomplish? Well, I think false steal is actually pretty important. You want to draw as many cards as possible uh, so that you have good drops every turn. But the, it it might actually go to fatigue. Like this is about about the board and the clears and just getting more cards, more quality cards and trying to set yourself up with um, with strong minions that are hard to deal with. Um, Injured Blade Master, for starters, is a pretty nice card to have. Let's say for attack. If you're able to, to keep it alive and just heal it, it's a, a pretty strong minion that's hard to deal with. But other than that, it's just, you know, trading, 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 trading. Uh, it's really hard to go for face and just win for damage. 
Yeah, I can imagine that. That seems like a a little bit counterintuitive to try to go for a uh, face in a matchup like this where your opponent's hero power is so is going to be so strong when they combine it with their option of attacking and then their option of using hero power. It's going to be able to take over the board. But Kalento, I think he's managing to take over the board. Dark Cultist. This seems like a really important card in this matchup. And Silence here is wow, also look pretty at this. nice. Yeah, he's even going to shut off the uh, the damage from healing at that point. And RDU, I think, finding himself in a kind of bad spot. He definitely doesn't want that on turn 5. He wants that on turn 1. By the way, right now we can easily say that RDU is actually playing um, a more aggressive version with Undertaker, Zombie Chows, probably Loot Hoarders, and uh, not that much endgame. So he needed to take endgame from from Colento, but he's getting some cards that are not that endgame-ish, like a Holy Fire and, um, and a, an, an Organized Soul Priest. So this will be mostly about the first turns. It's like if Colento is able to just um, survive here and uh, and win the board, then he is in a really good position to just win the game because RDU will not have enough steam to to be able to push with damage. Yeah, it sort of that's definitely almost exactly what's happening here. And wow, that smite! Uh, <laughs> it looks like smite is a like, big deal. He drew smite, but this this is what it allows. Now he's gonna kill Zombie Chow. He's gonna kill his opponent's three one. Already you played this Zombie Chow so that he could have a way to threaten this Dark Cultist, and now he no longer has that because all of his all of his stuff's dead. Um, this is a it, I don't want to say it's a game losing spot for RDU quite yet, but this is he's going to have a lot of trouble I think pulling this one out. He's it feels like he's pretty far behind. The uh, the hand quality is on average going to be much higher oh for Flinto because he's playing because he's playing a, a you know a slower version of it. And Thought Steel again, this is a card you mentioned was really key. Uh, whoa, what the heck? <laughs> it's a gnome. What is happening in here? Okay, every <laughs> let's stop everything. What's going on? Why is no? Why is mind control tech in this list of thirty cards right now? It's pretty interesting. I would love to ask Ari about it because you know, like Priest has a lot of AOE spells, and um, with Circle of Healing and Alkanite Soul Priest, I I don't imagine that your opponent can have four minions on board. But look at this, Ari, you actually has four minions now. So if Colent would have a my control tech, you can you <laughs> use it. You know what's funny? Oh my god, if Colento would actually like thought steal mind control tech and then RDU is overextending oh and getting like a minion out. Now you're just wishing bad things on people. <laughs> <laughs> With that, that was just hilarious. <laughs> what do you do here, by the way? It's um, um Well, it feels to me like it's sludge belt here. But there's, a, I think there's some merit to playing Sylvanas or playing Cabal Shadow Priest. How if, afraid are you of Circle of Healing? Because you could actually play um, Cabal Shadow Priest, steal the, steal the Undertaker, and kill the four, uh, the four free. So you leave your opponent with only the Okanai Soul Priest. Well, he just attacked with the Dark Cultist. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, yeah. I missed that. So uh, I, I was too excited about the mind control tech. <laughs> if you play Cabal Shadow Priest, um, I think that's the one that plays most into something. Like Circle Healing, Savannah said though is a totally fine play. Uh, it's going to act as a big taunt, and then Sludge Belcher, of course, is a big taunt. I really don't think that the three plays have that much variation in, in how different they are. Honestly, they all kind of feel like the same style of play, where your opponent is going to be forced to attack your stuff and kind of go from there. Holy no, oh, that's a pretty nice card. Oh my gosh! I was just thinking he's missing an AOE, <laughs> but now he got the best thing ever. That is a huge draw right now. That's Our huge clear. entire board is gone, and Kalento's got four cards in hand and six power on the board. Um, I'm sorry, RDU, but I do not see you winning this game. Well, Shadow you know, it's a priest versus priest. Anything can happen still. What the heck? There are some very interesting choices in this deck. You mean Shadow Word Pain? Yeah, like well, what's what's your goal with Shadow Word Pain? What is that? Why is this in here? I guess it's um, it's all about the the early game. It's just you are trying to win the early game with all those cards. Oh, this is just gonna like this is specifically fighting against something like Undertaker then. Yeah. Like when you don't have Undertaker control, Shadow Word Pain is gonna be taking that control from your opponent. Okay, that makes sense. This deck is actually like um, in a good position to fight against Hunter. Well, I just said that there's no way for him to win the game basically, but then he drew a pretty perfect sequence of cards and now he's able to start fighting back against this. 
Uh, of course, Cabal Shadow Priest is going to have a little bit to say about that. Yeah, yeah. drawing some more cards in here. It's oh. pretty good. Those Shadow War Death, it's like they seem that they are useless, but on the other hand, there is Sylvanas Shadow War Death combo. Yep. I think he's looking more to use Oh my it. god, mind control yeah, tech! No. Oh my gosh! <laughs> he got it! What is going on in here? <laughs> and the Coletto is just laughing. Just laughing about it. <laughs> oh my gosh! What is this happening? This card is actually good in a mirror. Now Colento is going to steal stuff. Oh my god. Admirable it's line, by the way. Colento is... I mean, RDU is in a fine spot to be able to win this game. It's going to matter a lot about how this Sylvanas... Uh, this wannabe mind control Sylvanas... Ability, <laughs> what is the Sylvanas heck? Shadow or Death. <laughs> okay. Just, just opponents start cultists and take Sylvanas, here? Sylvanas. This... Wait... Okay, so you said before that there's no way you can see that RDU can actually win this game. Do you I'm see a way for Colento to win this game now? Um, it's going to involve a circle of healing, I know that. And wow, Artosis would be so proud this game. So many own Sylvanas deaths happening. This game is just crazy. It's like big props to, to RDU. This mind control tech was actually a key card. <laughs> Circle there is healing. a circle of healing, but not yeah. on Colento's side. Colento in trouble. He needs that circle of healing. Yep, I don't think circle of healing is going to win in the game anymore, though. He's yeah, I think it's over. Giant minions on the board. And oh. mind control is mind control tech I is a four gosh. four. I'm pretty sure mind control tech actually won this game. For yeah, you. I can't believe it. This is, I'm stunned. This is just crazy. Can you do anything here? Like Shadow War, okay, Shadow War Death into a 5 6. That's three points of mana. Can you steal something that's important? Uh, good if luck. you steal such Belcher, it doesn't matter no. because it. <laughs> yeah, what do, you, like, what do you take at this point? How do you fend this board position? I guess you can steal that 3 4, but it doesn't matter. Like, just. Um, Seven points of mana, you're left to free, and you can only like heal yourself, and that's it. So you have 14, and you're still dead? Or are you? Well, what can you take oh. to dying? Like, even if you, if you take Dark Cultist, that's going to be the biggest power you can take of a minion that you can also kill. So then you're facing down 8, 12, 13, 14, 15 damage. So say you Shadow Word Death, and you're still facing down 10 damage after you suicide your Dark, cult your dark Cultist that you took from your opponent. Yeah, so that's you're the only line of play that he can do to stay alive. And if that's the only line of play, that's totally fine. That's the only optimal play in here. Okay. It makes sense. Also, you get a 4 6, which is pretty good. Yep. 4, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh. <laughs> this is still pretty good, though. Yeah, that's a huge board. Yep. And Two more draw. Games. Yeah, more, more draw power. Just He's, only got cards. He's only got like four cards left. Oh, he did draw a lot. <laughs> <laughs> did he? <laughs> just, just a couple cards. Well, I told you that this game will go to fatigue, right? Yeah, and then all of the theft that happened this game. Yeah, that's going to do uh, it. That's it. Colento is going to lose his first game. Wow. you? I can't believe it. That game was just epic. I there's a point in that game, game five, Kalento versus RDU. Pretty important one too. Yeah, I like the warlock. I think Druid is fine though. Like even if you think about it from that sort of perspective, it makes a lot of sense to play Druid. Because you've already seen my control tech at this point. Is there any more information you can get from your opponent? Or is Druid again a deck you want to save for sort of an information deck to play against Paladin before you choose to queue up something like Miracle Rogue against it? Yeah, and Warlock is also a good pick because of the all the counter cards that you have. And um, yeah. RDU was unlucky to, to lose with Warlock against Priest, but maybe Colento will be able to just play his plan and um, get all those four attack minions. Yeah, I sort of, I about. agree with I agree with these mulligans here from Colento too. By the way, I think you are searching really really hard for your four drops uh, Mountain Giant and Twilight Drake. I think those are the two most important ones. If he's going second, I think there's a lot more merit to keeping something like Earth and Ring Farce here, so that way you have a turn three play. So instead of life tapping and then having to skip one of your turns of life tap, you actually have a play to make. Just play it. Yeah. 
but yeah, certainly you just mulligan everything to get the Twilight Drake and Mountain so. Giant. Huh? What yep. do you think about RDU's hand? It's just he has a coin, he has a Dark Cultist. A power Wood Shield is pretty cool. Um, I think Dark Cultist is pretty much the only one you want to keep. If you even keep it. I think it's probably it's probably the strongest actual minion in the deck though, so it's hard to not keep it, I think. Shadow War Death, oh my god. This is an answer for Giant that he needed. Yep. Because there is a mountain giant in Colento's hand. Yep. Also, being Colento here, I would love to see Iron Beagle to be able to play um, Ancient Watcher and Silence it if needed. Also really important. He's def Wow, Jaraxxus has found his way into the deck. This is truly aimed at beating something like Priest. Uh, Colento's actually smiling. I mean, he was smiling for a moment because he got Jaraxxus. Colento was originally a, a Warlock player, by the way. Like the, the, When he started streaming, mostly he was streaming Handlock. And a lot of players knew him uh, for his handlock play. So this is another deck that he mastered. Well, actually, it's funny. If the, the, do you think there is a deck that Colento haven't mastered? Um, that's tough to say, honestly. Again, I think a lot of it has to do with just a, a, a style-wise. He definitely plays a much more defensive style than a lot, I think a lot of players do. And I... I that accounts for a lot of things. Number one, it makes him a lot better in certain kinds of matchups. And I think in other kinds of... Like, in matchups where he needs to be recklessly aggressive, I'm not sure that's what he's comfortable playing. Uh, so that style would be pretty much, if I had to pinpoint a weakness, it would be that. But he can just avoid that. That's a really easy thing. Like, he doesn't have to be playing reckless styles. So it's not really much of a weakness. <laughs> that's what makes him such a good player, is that any sort of his quote-unquote weaknesses that he would have are just avoided by how he chooses to play the game. Meanwhile... Shadow Flame, pretty good, uh, pretty good little answer here from Colento. I think this is one of the reasons why Priest has so much trouble in a matchup like this. Yeah, and uh, on the other hand, RDU uh, took a, a good way here. It's like when you're playing this matchup, you have to be really aggressive. You have to hope yep. that the European doesn't have the board clear. And he did take his chance, but uh, unfortunately for him, for him, Colento had everything. Yeah, he was able to clear. Even slam Sylvanas to try to get a lead on the board, and Coletto has Mortal Coil and Siphon Soul, just two perfect cards for the scenario. Shadow Flame picked up, not so great right now, and Soulfire, Soulfire is sort of interesting. I actually, it's been a while since I've seen a Priest cast Soulfire. Shadow Flame actually is a pretty nice card if you have yep. Sylvanas, but RDU actually got, uh, well, he lost his Sylvanas. I'm not sure if you remember the play when a mask had Shadow Flame at some point and a priest, and everybody was like, Yeah, this card is useless. And then he was able to use it with Sylvanas and win the game. <laughs> Did he take a Ragnaros or something? Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no surprise there, Ragnaros on the side of the board. Are you going to continue to overload the board? Kalento, under a lot of pressure, is he going to be able to stabilize Hellfire. through this? Hellfire's not quite going to do it, I don't think. Well, Dark Cultist is annoying. It's like, even if you kind of yep. try to clear the board, then some of the minions will get buffed. You could just slam Jaraxxus. Oh, wait a minute. These Molten Giants are not going to be free if he doesn't have fire. Yeah, yeah. You don't. You, you can't <laughs> play Jaraxxus here. You, you have to use your Molten Giants. Well, hang on. If he Hellfires... There's no reasonable way to use Hellfire, is there? Because if you attack, let's say you attack the Sludge Belcher, you use Hellfire, uh, Mortal Coil, one of the Dark Cultists, and then you play two Molten Giants. It's, is that reasonable or is that too much? Well, or is that thing, just not as good as doing this? I was thinking about it as well, but the thing is, like, something will get buffed and then it can get annoying for you. Okay. So just setting up a wall with the Giants here is pretty safe, I guess. Just slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, also you've seen one Shadow or Death, and uh, what are the other ways that the Priest can actually clear this? Like, he will have to trade. You don't expect uh, Power Overwhelming and Shadow Flame. <laughs> um, it's tough. To say. I certainly don't think he's expecting Shadow Flame. Yeah, but there is no Shadow Flame. Uh, well, Shadow Flame is not casted here, anyway. He's just trading. Right. I think it's totally reasonable. Oh my god, this is, the, this is the silence target. <laughs> this was unlucky <laughs> for you. The Cabal Shadow Priest, the Cowbell Shadow. It needs, it needs more. It always and needs more. He's got a fever. The only prescription is... Uh, if if he plays the Zombie Chow, he's just playing oh. the whole fire. Good call. 
Well, faceless Face manipulator. Though. Wait oh, a geez. minute. Okay, let's think about this turn for a second here because things just well, got a little bit crazy. The thing is, like, you can just kill fire and and kill the four uh, four eight. So, it, it, like, however you look at it, it looks pretty sick. It's just you can hellfire, kill the Cabo Shadow Priest, and you still have six mana, and you can play a Molten Giant for free and then faces it. There is so much happening here. I don't even know where to start with this turn. I guess you can you can just stabilize with three giants, and if you feel like your taunt is enough, you're just safe. I think yeah, like, I think you're right. I think he's just gonna go with he's just he's just gonna not really worry too much about this giant and continue to. to oh, he's going for a safe mode. Slow. I mean, if there is a a mind blast and like a holy fire, you might be just dead. So I guess this is a safe play. Or if there's a soul fire, and like whatever, <laughs> he just triple soul fires him, manages to get all the perfect discards. Well, this giant is going to die anyway. What can what can R do you actually do here? It looks like, like Hol Holy Nova plays. I Okay, so let's say he's I, he's got to find a way to push for lethal, right? Yeah, but he's got to find a way to kill one of these giants in the meantime. Then he can just holy nova and um, just uh, heal himself and pass. Yikes! Because if he enough. if he, yeah if he draws, wait a minute. What happens if Kalento? Excellently life taps. He's not going to do that, though. You face Jaraxxus, Eridor Lord of the Burning Legion. Yeah, Jaraxxus is, is painful for Ardu. Yeah, I was thinking is Ardu is going to kill Kalento if he gets Circle of Healing, because then he just plays Soulfire <laughs> and Zobby Chow, you know, just kills everything uh, and deals a lot of damage. Oh, but right now it doesn't look good. Yeah, he's got to get this 5 damage in from this now. And, wow, look at this. He's even going to Soulfire this giant. He did the board. Yep, solid use of his cards. But, oh my gosh, Defender of Argus. These Infernals are going to get taunted now. I don't know if there's any way <laughs> he's going to be able to climb back. Do you, really want to, do you really want to clear the board, by the way? Or do uh, you just um, set up a wall? I don't, I don't know if you're worried about it. I don't know if you're even worried about clearing the board right now. I think you just... I think you set just up a wall. Us. Yep. Okay. The Great Wall of oh. Kalento once again being assembled. Yeah, just straight to the yeah, dump just, too. This just that's lethal. So I yep. RDU one draw. Oh That's not gonna do it. A good one. He and is going he to clear. live another turn. But not sure it's gonna be able to, to make much of a difference. Even picks up Ancient Watcher. Yeah, but RDU knows. Wow. Excellent. He faced Jaraxus. Would you would you prefer to face Jaraxxus or Colento? Oh yeah, I'm I'm pumped for this game six. This is this is either the start of a miraculous comeback or the end of a brutal shutout. A lot of it's going to depend on this build too. If this build is like if it's say it's focused uh, too much in one direction, that can end up being a big detriment. And at the same time, if it's if it's spread too thin, maybe it doesn't have enough answers for a particular. Uh, line of play. Those, all of those things are going to come into effect. Actually, he opens up with a, with the humility and a silence already. You were talking about how humility really affects these giants sometimes, but some of the most powerful tools for um, the handlock is something like Iron Beak Owl. And Iron Beak Owl actually isn't that good in this matchup. Aside from doing things like clearing off humility or Aldor Peacekeeper from your giants with an Iron Beak Owl. Yeah, that's certainly an option. It's like a lot of players actually are, are forgetting about it. That they feel, hey, I cast the humility on your giant, so now I'm just out of lethal range or whatever. And then you just use the owl and, and get yourself back. But um, here, Colento is actually missing the cards he needs. Like, there is no, tw no Twilight Drakes, no giants. Like, even if he has a Twilight Drake, it will be unfortunate for him. Oh, and he Ooh. gets it. Do I like, you I like it? No, I like leading with the. Uh with the Earthenring Farseer here. The Earthenring Farseer is going to challenge this entire board. It heals you back up a little bit. You, know, you want to be using... Point. Right. You want to be using your life to, to draw cards instead of using it to be able to just 
take extra hits from your opponent's stuff. He chooses to go with Drake, though. Are you sure you're not saying it? Are you sure you're not saying it because you know that there is a spell breaker? Because, you know, coming up Twilight Drake is just such a strong play. Sure, but it isn't just isn't using Earthrending Farce here, sir, basically just almost the same thing. You're still challenging your opponent's entire board and you're getting through life in the process. You do get to keep your coin. And then maybe you draw a Mountain Giant next turn. You have more options to swing. I mean, this is... It just it's happened in reverse is all like there's no the this is going to happen to the twilight drake regardless of what happens like in you in the instances your opponent has a silence so it doesn't matter what order that happens in i just think that playing the earth and farcer is better because you get to keep your coin for it yeah i i guess i agree and then soulfire is actually lucky not discarding anything important Twilight Drake again. Yeah, actually, that was really weird. Soulfire didn't discard Jaraxxus. I wonder if they fixed that bug <laughs> yeah. a couple of patches ago, where no matter what the circumstances or how many cards in your hand, Soulfire discards Jaraxxus, even if it's not in your hand. Well, this Jaraxxus is golden, so maybe it's immune to Soulfire. Yeah, that's what I thought when I crafted mine, too. <laughs> it's still the discard? Okay. Oh, gosh. Well, it, it, oh. that's why you hate Handlock, by the way. Yeah, and Fate's tempting him with a second one. How greedy are you? Molten Giants will not come early in this game. 24 uh, points of health, that's a lot. But, you know, it's hard to say who's winning this game right now because, I mean, I would say RDU because the game is going pretty far. RDU has a lot of cards still. He has the answers. He has equality. He has humility. He's not running out of cards. And he has a, a pretty good board. Yeah, typically the longer the game extends, I would give the advantage to Paladin. Yeah, same. Um, like, Handlock wants to establish board control of the Giants pretty early, just, just you know, to, to exhaust removal. And here, I don't feel like the removal is, is getting exhausted at all. It's right. solid board and removal is still in hand. Part of that to account for, too, is that even though he's... He's kind of losing control of the... Wow, what the heck? Super aggro. It's, it's something that you mentioned, that RDU is a yep. player that really wants to push for damage if possible. Just He's just grasping the chance and going for face. Yep. And you know what? It's um, Even if he gets uh, Warlock low, and it, if Molten Giants show up, he still has a great answer. He has equality, yep. Consecration, and then he can just push for damage and win the game. You know, another thing too is if Kalento is forced to play this Jaraxxus before he gets to his Molten Giants, the Molten Giants at that point, become almost impossible to play. Because your new maximum life total has become 15. And so Molten Giants will go back to costing 20 when you're at 15 health with Jaraxxus in play. That's the drawback you have to face yeah. uh, when you're facing Jaraxxus. Oh, like if you're playing Jaraxxus. Yeah. Got a wall up, though. Um, is this 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11? Doesn't look good for Colento. What is happening to this board? It's like, what is, like something with everything disappeared. <laughs> well, he used, he used Consecration. Wild Power Mancer dealt one damage to everything, and then the Sludge Belter and the Wild Power Mancer were able to finish off the Taunts, and then the Defender of Argus died <laughs> to the two damage from Consecration Sequence. and the one damage from Wild Power Mancer. So five points of damage goes across to the face. And this is sort of a uh, this is a really interesting play here from RDU because he's actually he doesn't care if his opponent has Molten Giants in the scenario. He has a quality to push through it. Um, so far, he just got self and soul. Well, he did take a risk and it paid off. Yep, definitely Guardian of Kings here. Doesn't get the battle cry from it, but it doesn't matter right now. He just needs a 5 6 on the board. Since he just saw a Siphon Soul discarded from his opponent, too, he feels really comfortable making this play. And I don't think that Kalento has an option. I think he's got to drop this Draxus. And now we'll have a situation where Kalento will be able to, instead of just throwing cards, he will be able to just produce those Infernals. And do you think that Infernals have a chance to just set up a wall of Colento and be able to just swing the board in here? Oh, absolutely. That's This is one of the, the main things that I was talking about where... Uh, oh, my gosh. Okay, I counted, my damage, I counted my damage way wrong here. So, <laughs> not even close to lethal. But, yeah, um, but Infernals can very easily take over the game in a situation like this. And this is one of the reasons, this is one of the ways that Handlock starts seeing its win rate. Is it grinds the game down at this point, and then the Infernal hero power takes over the game at some point. Well, not if your opponent has lethal next turn with, like, whatever you do, there is equality consecration, and you just die. Like, there is yeah. nothing Colento can do now. Well, he can't Shadow Flame here. 
Oh yeah, he can clear the board. He has yeah. to clear the board. Like, I think it's gonna be Shadow Flame and Mortal Coil. Finishes off, yep. Picks up an extra card from it. Gets a 6-6 six, six on the board. That's an important draw. Oh yeah, Farseer's pretty good. Tyrion. Oh, put your face in the light. Tyrion is gonna hit the board. And uh, I don't see a circumstance. Wait, why does he not swing with the weapon here? Interesting. Well, I don't understand. Why did he? Maybe he was playing too fast. This, you know, just to play your cards and, and pass. He feels like he's in a really good position here anyway. Do you face this? The Tyrion? Is there, yeah. is there a reason we don't want to face this, the Tyrion? I guess if well, we this turn. You might maybe lose he your weapon. Face, he did, maybe he doesn't want to face this at this turn. I think that's a possibility. Well, we can probably just uh, play Sludge Belcher and then the Farts here as well. I think that's totally reasonable. If he does that, is he dead? No, he's not. Okay, 15. He's pretty far out of range at this point. This game is pretty weird. <laughs> I'll be honest. It's like, I didn't expect the Jaraxxus versus Therion face-off here. Is that, is that one you didn't expect? The old Jurassic <laughs> Tyrion faceless. Um, this game's getting crazy, by the way. I don't, actually don't know who's winning this. Oh wow! Well, now, so. now I have an idea of who's winning a long game. But those double double Sun Fury Protector is so good, by the way. Yep. Look at this. He's even going to kill off this one one, knowing that Equality is a really big threat right now. Very heads up play here from Coletto. He could get three points damage to his opponent. Or he could use this weapon to pick off this one one, and the one one's really important. Oh, that is just Kaldazad late to the party. One turn late. <laughs> oh so nice. no! But this is a lot of pressure coming through. Wait, suddenly it actually looks good for Glento. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what is happening here? Solid, solid hold on this faceless. By the way, it's really important that this was in his hand because this is a second wall of defense uh, versus this Ashbringer, and RDU, well, how on earth does he deal with this board? It, and it, that Kofuzad is just going to die to Siphon Soul. That, I think that's just it. I think yeah. that the Infernals are proving too much. The Great Wall of Kalento once again. I don't even think he's going to use Siphon Soul here. I think he's just going to use an Infernal and Hero Power. I lied, he's going to use hey, I have to kill Siphon Kofuzad. Soul. <laughs> Come on. You just have to play super safe. Like. Make sure there is no way you're going to lose this game, and this That's is just insane. Do. Yeah, I don't. Admiral, no this is just left. insane. Like, yeah, I would never expect well, this outcome here. That's a uh, Jaraxxus for you. That's it. And that's gonna Infernals. do it. Oblivion, Infernals, <laughs> well played. Five one to Kalento.